Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're watching this presentation, which is called Would Chat GPT Recommend Your Brewery to New Drinkers? And my name is Scott Colby, and I'm with Market Your Craft. Really want to shout out to the sponsors and also Andrew and Craft Beer Professionals. Thanks so much for having us today. Now, if you watched the game last night, the NCAA men's game, you saw a hard fought battle between UConn and SDSU. If you were to ask ChatGPT, who's the better team in the men's NCAA championship game today? You're going to see from ChatGPT, I really don't know. Uh, hey, I. I got data back in 2021, and I'm not sure who might have won the game. If you were to ask Bing, which incorporates ChatGPT on top of its search engine, they would say the game happened between UConn and San Diego State, and UConn won with a game score of 70, 70 to 62. Questionable? Yeah. And then Google, and they're barred. Uh, artificial intelligence. Based on the results of the game, UConn won 76 to 59. So a couple things to point out here. ChatGPT is only trained with data up to 2021. Bing is trained with ChatGPT data as well as its own indexing, but it still got the answer wrong. 70 to 62 was not the score last night. And look at the references, the footnotes where it got its information. And then, of course, Google had the correct score, but was less conversational. And so the reason we bring this up is because ChatGPT is artificial intelligence. And we, we really want to talk about first what it is and what it is not. I would say it's newish. It's been around for a while. We actually don't don't even recognize some of the applications of it in the past with finishing my sentences when I'm typing or texting. So it's been around for a little while, but it's only come to the forefront more recently with all of the news and media. It's conversational. You can ask it a question and it's gonna respond in somewhat of a human voice. It's, it's fed by web content. That's where it gets its data, its information, and it's always learning. So when it provides a response and you let it know whether or not that response was spot on, it's gonna learn for the next person who asks a similar question. And then it's gonna to continue to fine tune. What it is not, it's not perfect. It definitely isn't perfect. It's not yet gameable. People talk about gaming search engines and trying to get their ranking up that much higher. Uh, we, we don't have that luxury yet. And it's not sentient or feeling. There's been a lot of talk about, could it actually have feelings? Could a computer and robot have feelings? We're not quite there yet. And it's, it's also not fully mature. It's very new. It's also not scary. What you see is a lot of media talking about how it's targeting people, it's watching people, it's very big brother. Artificial intelligence may head a number of different directions, but right now we're just on the cusp of what it could do. And what we're talking about today is how it really relates to your brewery from a marketing and a sales perspective. It's never gonna replace your best friend, making suggestions about an outfit to wear, or where to go, recommendations. And that's a personal relationship that you have. Again, the media is playing it up that uh, very similar to social media, you can have a two-way dialogue, but you're having a dialogue with a bot. How much of a relationship is that? It's never gonna replace your best friend. It, it creates music. It does, it creates works of art, original works of art. It writes papers and it can take instruction and it can run with it. However, it's, it's not how it's being portrayed in a very robotic sense. 
it's still very important, which is why we recommend that the work that you do right now with your brand story and all of the different aspects of the marketing of your brewery, it's going to help artificial intelligence guide those new drinkers to your tasting room in a way that search can't do with tens of thousands of results to a query. Let's do just a quick second's worth of level setting. Now, ChatGPT, it's, it stands for Chat Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Right? That's a lot of words. But the idea is that it's conversational results and responses to queries. It's been around for a while, but most recently got a lot of press in November. And that's when this consumer chat PT portal became available. And people started using it and asking it questions and, and getting responses based on that two-year-old data set, which was really interesting. Now, if you're looking for a timely topical response, ChatGPT isn't going to be able to help you. But just imagine the application of asking ChatGPT questions about a previous war or relationships with a foreign country, something rooted in history. It could come up with a very thoughtful response in a human voice. Double down, what if you gave it instructions to write five paragraphs worth of copy on the origin of popsicles. Silly example, but it would take from its archive of data, again, two years old, and it would write in a very conversational way exactly five paragraphs about the origin of popsicles. If you've been following the news about it, you've seen these kind of headlines, which don't necessarily help. It's we're on the fence here. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it something we can use? How can it be used against us? We're obsessed with mind-blowing chat GPT. New York City schools ban it because the students were using it to write term papers. How about contact agents, bots? Is there an opportunity for a chat GPT bot to replace the need for humans? in a customer service interaction? ChatGPT passes law exams, and then everybody's got their own ChatGPT clone. But what about this one most recently about Elon Musk and other tech leaders really saying, wait a minute, you know, I, I like what you're doing, but, but where's this headed? And you have to imagine that Elon and other folks like that want to be on the forefront of this. So Market Your Craft had to ask the question, how would ChatGPT respond to queries about Colorado breweries? Very interesting to us. Lots of words. You'll have access to this presentation after. But basically, what brewery in Denver, Colorado would my girlfriend like? And based on two-year-old data, it gave a very conversational opening. It's hard for me to say. Then it gave some criteria for what might constitute a popular brewery. And then three or four examples with a closer of Hey, basically, you know, try it for yourself. See what you think. So, so what you're seeing here is a very conversational response to an open-ended question about what my girlfriend would like. But the dialogue back and forth with a chat GPT-like bot becomes very fine-tuned. We asked chat GPT, 20 plus of these questions. And we did it for 
Colorado breweries, distilleries, wineries. We wanted to try and break it. We wanted to see what kind of data was in there. Where's the best place to watch a football game? How about the best scenery? How many of these breweries are award winning? And so we got responses all across the spectrum for those questions. But what we started to see was a pattern and the pattern was outdated data. This could be something that holds ChatGPT back. However, Microsoft saw the opportunity and so it dumped five boatloads of money into OpenAI, which is the company that developed the ChatGPT bot. And in doing so, they had obviously Bing, their search engine in mind. Because if you're able to overlay conversational responses on a timely data set, then the responses start to get more accurate. We were invited to beta test it, and so we did. We tried to break it with the same 20 questions that we asked about those Colorado breweries. Hey, what breweries near Denver would my partner like? How about this conversational response? Some of which actually overlapped with the older chat GPT responses, but brought forward to 2023. You might like these four or five, but notice the difference in making it conversational. What kind of beer does your partner prefer with an emoji? Okay, it's subtle, but it's trying to fine tune the responses for you. So again, the application is I could get a thousand responses from Bing or from Google to the question of which brewery would my girlfriend like? In a chat GPT or Bing enabled conversation, I get five. How are we gonna ensure that our breweries are part of that five that are recommended? Not to be outdone, Google introduced what they call BARD. And they've been working on this AI technology for a number of years. Uh, 2020, they introduced what they call Lambda, language model for dialogue applications. Uh, it's very heady, but the idea is the same basically as ChatGPT. Now we already know that Google and Bing are competitors on the search engine front. Bing placed its bets on ChatGPT and incorporated that into its chat features. Now Google incorporated and probably fast-tracked their own solution, Bard, based in Lambda, in order to be a direct competitor to Microsoft's Bing. So you bet, in this case, Google's trying to catch up. But the difference is Google dominates search without a question. Bing, far smaller player in the search space, had a two month at least uh, advantage on incorporating chat features into search in a broad way. Is that going to make a difference index-wise? Maybe. Uh, Google still has such a position in search. However, we're talking about it. Can't say the last time I used Bing before being invited to beta test. Lots of words, but the same question asked of Bard what breweries near Denver, Colorado would my partner like, came back with eight or 10 results, some of which are new, haven't been introduced in our previous two examples, some of which are redundant. Now, the idea is some of these breweries 
probably are spot on. Absolutely. People talk about it. People review it. Uh, which one would my partner like? If if there's a lot, if there's a body of content out there that says WinCoop is the winner as far as a date night or something like this, then you bet it's going to show up in the chat GPT responses towards the top of the list. The question again is, how do we make sure that your brewery has the same kind of dominance in a chat GPT or bar conversation that some of these other breweries do? And we're going to talk about how to get that done. The most important thing right now is to start. There's no template. There's no formula. We're all trying to figure it out. But what I'm going to suggest today is that the fundamentals of your brand story and telling that story across all your different digital media is going to be what helps to get you more prominent position in AI. So what you're gonna do is leave today with the tools you need to have relevance in organic search. Again, we're Market Your Craft. We do this for breweries, wineries, distilleries, and, and other craft beverages. And we've had some fun doing it with a lot of different companies over the years. We have great partnerships. We really wanna start this exercise today with a clear and concise brand story. Brand story framework, a business that takes bold action to deliver value to guests who deserve more. This is what we're interested in. Now, your brewery brand story is probably the single most important line in craft beer marketing. And we've talked about this a number of different times. It's, it's probably the one that's the most overlooked as well because it's really hard to distill down into a single sentence or two sentences what exactly your brewery is. Not to you, not to your family, not to your employees necessarily, but to the customer who's paying for your beers. Your business is obviously the brewery, right? It takes bold action. It blends, it brews, some verb there. It delivers value. Now, what, what am I getting when I visit the brewery? I, I might have a fine selection of beers, even food trucks, to guests who deserve more. Uh, you might say, in my case, Denver, uh, live music, everything that Denver has to offer. So a brewery brand story might look like Discover Ale Works, some fictitious brewery that I wish I owned, offers house-made beer, seltzers, and non-alc options for guests to enjoy with live music and popular Denver food trucks. Now, why am I putting this in front of you? It's because I'm gonna show you how Bing and Google really look at that statement on your website, what keywords they pull out. And in doing so, you're becoming more and more relevant for a chat with either Bing or Google and artificial intelligence. It's gonna pull out beer, seltzers, non-alc, live music and food trucks. Now we talk about this a lot, but it's not just the beer that draws people. It's 
It's the experience that they have. And this may very well have been the scene at, at your brewery or seltzery last, last night if people were watching the game or during the summer watching a ball game. Somebody who's, who's there for karaoke or, or bingo or whatever event you've got trivia let's it's all about bringing them in and having the experiences but if people don't know what you offer then it's a little bit more difficult for them to choose your brewery over others if they haven't been there and so what we always suggest is to design those pages with the amenities in mind because Again, the point of this conversation is that we get picked up with search. Brewery amenities. How about this sentence? Discover Ale Works features 10 TVs with NBA League Pass in a renovated firehouse with space for private events. Does this sentence exist somewhere on your website? Make it specific to you. My brewery features cornhole and a number of different yard games in a dog friendly environment, very close to public transportation. Whatever that sentence is for you, does it exist somewhere on your site? If it doesn't, then you're not instructing Google or Bing on how to present you in a conversational dialogue with someone who asks brewery near me that's dog friendly and you show up because the content on your website, 10 TVs, NBA league pass, renovated firehouse, private events, makes you more relevant to a conversational dialogue with somebody looking for their next brewery. This is really overlooked. And during COVID, it was extremely important to make sure that your operating hours, any conditions with respect to your brewery being open or the space inside or outside for guests to join you for a pint. It's just as important now to make sure that the basics when you're open, when you're closed, where you're located, how to get there. It's just as important to update the basics on your website now as it was during COVID for this reason. Google or Bing or Google My Business or Apple, any of these different business directories are going to pull what they find on your website, pull into their business listings. And so if your information is out of date on your website, then it's going to be out of date in the index content for a search engine. So it's extremely important to start talking about kind of your operation located near the light rail my brewery is a dog and kin friendly brewery open daily from 2 to 10 p.m. The way that Bing and Google will see that is discover ale works near public transportation, dog and kid friendly, and open daily from 2 to 10 p.m. It's it's fascinating to us and it's oftentimes forgotten about, but it's not just your website that you have to update. It's anything from high visibility, your Google My Business, social media channels, even the printed or emailed receipts 
that a guest might get after visiting you. Medium visibility might be partners and press, uh, dis delivery services like Drizzly. If you've got untapped, maybe even your neighbors down the street, letting them know when your business hours are or any updates to your operations. Lower visibility might be these directories, guilds, associations, local listings, wedding planners. And we're gonna talk briefly about leveraging the tools that we have. And that's Google My Business and, and other integrations. Now, if you've ever dove down deep into Google My Business, you know that you have more or less complete control on how you show up in a Google business listing. Now, this is an example of our business, Market Your Craft, and how we show up as a Google business listing. On the right-hand side, you might see market your craft, location, appointments, products, phone, contact, reviews. <coughs> but then as an admin of your Google My Business account, you see what's on the left-hand side and you can edit your profile, you can message with customers, you could take and receive calls. You can add a booking feature if there are reservations, for example, for your brewery or tasting room. We would spend time in these areas that are highlighted, editing your profile, adding a photo, listing the products, in our case, the guides that are available on our website the services that we provide and bookings, making an appointment to talk to us, similar to making a reservation. The same thing is true with your brewery. Editing your profile, adding a photo. If you haven't done this, this is the low hanging fruit. This is the opportunity for you to get right with Google in order to eventually get right with, again, ChatGPT and any artificial intelligence bots. Projects like this are a lot of fun for us. We really help those breweries figure out what their strategy is with respect to their overall business and how they show up online and off. Another key area that you wanna shore up is encouraging reviews on those third-party sites. You may not like Yelp, you might not like Untapped, but they're huge sources of content and they get picked up a lot by search engines. Now, why, you would ask, why spend any time with these review sites that, that I'm not completely keen on. Well, it's because the more content that exists about your brewery, favorable or challenging, the more pointers that you have to your website, the more pointers that you have to your services and your products. And search engines pick that up. We call that reciprocal linking. But also artificial intelligence picks that up. And what you're doing is you're, you're building your credibility, credibility and your authority with having other people talking about you. And so we're, we're getting into this realm of if other people are speaking on our behalf, if other people are ambassadors to our brewery, reviews, journalists, and otherwise, if people are talking about us, then ChatGPT, Bing, Bard, they're gonna pick up on that 
and they're going to rank your content higher within that very small subset of results in the response. You saw it was four or five breweries as opposed to a thousand results. Now, if I were to have a hypothetical review for my brewery, my brewery has a friendly staff and a huge selection of popular beer styles. This is a must-see brewery. Bing and Google, they would find blah, blah, friendly staff, blah, blah, huge selection, popular beer styles, must see. They're going to associate those keywords with Discover Ale Works, very much like the other tactics that we're talking about. All of these stories are going to pay off in the end. You probably do this already, but encourage the next generation of brewers. Encourage those passionate, enthusiastic home brewers who just love the hobby and love your beer. Give them something that they can grasp onto that gives them a tighter connection to your brewery. Not only are they going to love you for it, and they're going to spend their dollars in your tasting room, but they're going to talk about you. I'm a home brewer, make wine. This is not an uncommon scene in the corner of my place. If I had a brewery that I really loved, that offered me recipes, insights, ingredients, kits, in order to produce a clone recipe of my favorite, you bet I'm going to be an ambassador for that brewery, and I'll talk about it all the time. You have to tell people what you offer. And for example, maybe we sell a home brewer starter kit. We have the full set of ingredients for a, a clone of our most popular style. Bing and Google pick up starter kit, ingredients, recipe book, popular styles, and associate that with my brewery. Let's, let's take one second to pause and make this practical again. A brewery near me in Denver, Colorado, that offers home brewing classes. Brewery near me is one unique, distinct search that could result in a thousand different results. Offers homebrew classes, probably a smaller subset. Chances are good that it's not going to say, here are the 10 breweries in Denver that offer homebrew classes. It's going to treat those separately. And it'll give me the thousand results of the breweries near me and maybe 400 results of homebrew class, whether that's online, in Europe, wherever it is, the two results are not connected. Again, this is an opportunity for ChatGPT, Bing, and Google, artificial intelligence to start bringing these terms together and tightening up the responses to get down to that four or five subset. You probably do this just naturally, and that's have host, uh, host different uh, clubs, community events, different tours. And this is what you need to talk up on your website if you don't already. If you've got the ability to bring people behind the scenes, you bet they're going to talk about you. What if we were to say, in a very relevant local example here to Lakewood, my brewery hosts the Lakewood Fermentation Club. First Monday of every month, tours and scale up brew days. Again, this is amenities that if we're not talking about, Google and Bing are picking it up. 
Lakewood Fermentation Club, First Monday, Member Tours, Scale Up Brew Days. These are the keywords that Google and Bing found. It also is a shout out to the Lakewood Fermentation Club. The, re the reciprocal links between the two are going to give us more authority and more credibility. We don't do this enough. We've talked about this in previous presentations, but the idea is celebrate your space. Give people a, a virtual tour of your brew house, of your tasting room, of your outdoor patio, of the space that a new drinker would love. Photos and videos are the best way to do that, having something visual. Here's the rub. The rub is that those are very image-based pieces of content. The seating, entertainment, the food. It doesn't currently get picked up in artificial intelligence. And you know, this is going to work itself out. And the point is that artificial intelligence, Bing, Google's BARD solution, what they're doing is they're reflecting words. They're not reflecting images in their responses, not yet, at least. And so the best we can do right now is to geek out, make sure that we use the proper tagging in our web pages so that each image or each video has some sort of alt tag that gets picked up by search engines. It's not going to show up in the results. It definitely benefits for screen readers and ADA compliance. But it's not going to, at this point, influence the results of a ChatGPT, Bing, or BARD conversation. So it's a best practice, but it's not necessarily going to get you get you any closer to a, a high ranking result. Press releases, we love press releases. It's the best. It's free advertising. It takes time, but once you develop that, that really solid template, that boilerplate, you can use it over and over and over. And what you're talking about is the stuff that matters. It's new releases, new products, new opportunities for people to experience your brewery. And if you really want to make a, a name for yourself, you start to curate this list of journalists that are friendly to your brewery. When you send them a press release, they're probably going to write about you and they're writing about you to their audience, whether that's a, a local publication, a nationwide publication, an industry publication. So you're getting new eyes on your brewery, which is a win. You get additional authority and credibility with search, which is a win. And it ups your ranking and puts you in that, that small response set for an artificial intelligence chat. So remember why we do press releases, something that is different, something that disrupts the norm, supporting local, you can't go wrong by shouting out to different organizations and partners in the community, highlighting successes at your brewery. If that's a second location, notifying of business changes, Lots of words, but this is a sample template. If you've never written your own press release, it's super straightforward. The contact, the title, the sub, where, and then it's generally speaking, first one or two sentences are the hook, and then you have at least one or two quotes from notable people within your organization. You might have a forward-looking paragraph about what's next. And then you have a very uh, generalized brewery statement at the very bottom. 
and you send that directly to the 10 people in your media list, the 50 people in your media list, and just watch that get picked up. If I were to use that very same title and sub, Discover AOWorks opens a second tasting room, explosive growth, investment in Lakewood, Bing and Google are going to see that not only on your own site, because it's a best practice to put it on your own site, but they're going to see it everywhere else in the world where that story gets picked up. Local publication, national publication, industry publication. It's going to find that, and that builds your credibility. Second tasting room, explosive growth, making investments in Lakewood. Keeping a full calendar of events. A lot of times breweries have the events, but are they putting those on the website? You may have a nice calendar feature like the events calendar for WordPress. If you use a WordPress site, makes it very easy for you to catalog everything happening in a month. And that could be Anything from your trivia night on Thursday to your food trucks on Saturday and a new release every Friday, whatever that, whatever that is, putting that up on your website not only informs your guests about what's going on and the excitement around your brewery, but it tells Google and Bing that you are active and all of that content gets indexed. A lot of our clients are surprised that their calendar event entries actually rank higher than some of the food trucks and other vendors that are being promoted in those events. It's because your cachet for the brewery and your ranking for the brewery website makes your content that much more valuable. The same thing is true for ChatGPT, Google, and bang, if they see a, a nice bit of content in a calendar like ours on our website and beer day uh, this week, they're going to tune in to the content that's in those event entries, and they're going to index that, and they're going to associate that with you. Description of your event, the date, the time, when it's happening, where it's happening, Who's organizing it? If not you, are you partnering, partnering with somebody? Is there, a, is there a photo that's going to get people engaged? If I had a beer day this week, Google, ChatGPT, Bing, they may pick up on beer day, the act, FDR, March 22nd. This is this is never something that you would put on your website. However, Market Your Craft actually gets indexed pretty high when you search for beer day because we've got a really solid calendar entry. If you had the same for your trivia nights, your beer releases, your food trucks, it increases your ranking and increases your relevance ultimately, to a chat GPT scenario. We're in the home stretch. Your food options. If you say that you're a bar and a restaurant, that's great. If you have maybe a calendar of events with your food trucks, yeah, that's, that's good too. But to the extent that you celebrate how easy it is to drink a beer and have food at your brewery on your website, then the search engines are going to pick that up and they're going to say, brewery near me with food options. Well, yeah, you bet. Discover Ale Works is up there at the top because the two of those together, brewery near me with food options, is something that's higher ranked in the search engines and more relevant to the conversational responses of artificial intelligence. 
So we're a full service tap room, scratch made salads, sandwiches and desserts, noon to 10 p.m. You bet that brewery near me with these options is gonna rank higher than somebody else in organic search. Full service, desserts daily. But a lot of times we forget to spell this out on our website. We assume tap room and restaurant doesn't get it done. Tap room and restaurant featuring. Think about and think about adding additional color and detail around each of your amenities. And then you become known for that. Trade only events. Now this is again about getting people talking about you and the opportunity is there for press, journalists, for consumers, as well as friends and peers in the industry to be talking about you and to be relevant in those kind of conversations. What if you hosted a trade event with the five breweries in your same town or street and just invited them over to talk, invited them over to check out your brewery, get on the brew deck, maybe even do a collaboration with you. The more you invite the brewing community into your day-to-day, -day, the more relevant you are and the more authority you have in conversations about breweries in your area. And so we called it camaraderie. It's, it's peers supporting peers. And what if our story looked like the brewery in 2022 had a collaboration with another fictitious brewery, K2, which netted us a gold at the GABF. Bing and Google love it because it's industry talking about industry, collaboration, K2 Brewing, gold medal, GABF. Now, why did we go through all of these different stories? If you do one of them, if you do three of them, you may get noticed in search. If you start layering more and more in, you're talking about all of these giving you additional credibility in each. And so altogether, they enable and it's a brewery near me and food options. It's a brewery near me and beautiful scenery and live music. Now this is right now exactly why artificial intelligence should mean something and should be important to your marketing team. It's because the more sophisticated that it gets and the more that it learns, the more conversational it is, the more consumers are gonna rely on it to help them get to yes more quickly than a thousand returned breweries in a query about breweries near me. People don't have time for that. People want the fast way to yes. We believe that if you get the fundamentals right, brand story and the basics and everything that we talked about, if you get those right independently together, it's going to make you more relevant, more credible, more authoritative in these conversations that people are having with the chat GPTs of the world. Who knows where that's going to head? Is there going to be a robot sitting right across from you speaking in a very conversational way? Is it always going to be limited to a chat or a messenger bot on your phone or your desktop? 
think think beyond the awkwardness of right now to where this could go. If it goes nowhere, you've still won because these fundamentals make you more relevant for search, make you more relevant for a, a mobile uh, brewery is near me search when I'm in the moment and I want to go someplace close. So you cannot go wrong by getting the fundamentals of marketing your brewery correct. And it's going to put you far ahead of your peers and competitors if and when artificial intelligence continues to grow and take off. You bet that people are going to try and find ways to monetize it like they do search. You bet that the big tech player is going to find ways to own it like Microsoft with a 10 billion with a B investment in open AI so they can incorporate the chat GPT feature set into Bing. This is not going anywhere, which is why addressing these things right now help you to show up in a query like this brewery near me that's family friendly with food options and live music. Separately, those each would come back with hundreds, if not thousands of results. In an artificial intelligence chat, there could be five to 10. We want you to be part of that five to 10 subset. And this will help get you there. We don't have a magic ball on this one. It's fun to talk about. We love going down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out, trying to break, trying to make relevant new tech, bring that to you so that you can figure it out for yourself. Maybe we help to give you a blueprint so that you can come up with a strategy on your own, or we're always happy to help. The point is that if you get the basics right, you can never go wrong. With that, we want to offer up everybody who watched this presentation a free guide. We always do this in our craft beer professionals presentations. We'd love for you to have one of our resources for free. Go to marketyourcraft.com and use the CBP coupon. All of these guides are blown out versions of the small tactical executions that we talked about today. If you want blueprints to get it done, you have access to that for free. So thank you very much for tuning in today. Keep an eye out for where ChatGPT, Bing, and Bard go, and let us know if you have any questions.